Good morning. I'm Pastor Sean. Today is Tuesday, April 20th, and thank you for joining me for our morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips. My mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. And his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. Our text for today is uh, Luke chapter 7, verses 18 through 35. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it was written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When all the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with the baptism of John. Uh, But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. To what then shall I compare the people of this generation, and what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you didn't dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he's spoken to us by his Son. Alrighty, so this is this is a, a, a good good text for for dealing with doubts um, because you have uh, uh, John the Baptist who is in prison at this time and uh, he's he's calling his disciples and saying, look go go and um, go and ask of Jesus, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? Now uh, some some commentators, would suggest that this is a test for his disciples that John knows exactly who Jesus is because he's John the Baptist. You know, he's the one who baptized Jesus. He pointed to Jesus and said, "Behold, the Lamb of God." Okay, so there's no way John could be having a crisis of faith. So this must be a test for his disciples. He's saying, "You go, you know, don't take it on my word. Go and see for yourself that Jesus is the one." Okay, <laughs> I guess. I mean, that's one way to go with the text. Um, However, there's nothing really in the in the text to give that explanation. It's just that's that is applying your desire onto the text. You know, your desire for how John should be, how you think John should be. Uh, for me, I just kind of read it straight as it is, and um, and John is having a, a, a crisis of faith. I mean, he's in jail, and it's, it's nothing's going according to plan. You know, this isn't the way it's supposed to be, and so it's perfectly reasonable to to think that he is he's now rethinking things you know and a lot of people 
most of the people following Jesus, all most of these people making up the crowds following Jesus, thought he was a different kind of king. Thought he was coming to bring a different kind of salvation. You know, he was coming to release them from the, from Rome. He was coming to um, build up the kingdom of Israel again. That's not why he's coming. So. Um, a lot of people you know are upset when they don't see Jesus doing the things they think he should be doing you know rising up against the powers that they think he should be rising up against so john same thing it's just this isn't mm, this isn't the way it's supposed to go um and so jesus basically points them to the scriptures that talk about how you know when the, the, the when when god's salvation comes the blind receive their sight the lame walk lepers all this stuff so, um, just focusing on on that little first portion for for today is is I think a, a, always a, a much needed thing because it reminds us that you know the the greatest of of those born of women, John the Baptist, even he struggled, even he um, had his doubts, his his days where he was like, I just don't know. Um, and, you know, certainly we don't want to say that doubts are in and of themselves a good thing, because they're not, you know. God doesn't want us to doubt. He wants us to have assurance, certainty. Um, however, we kind of hold these two things in tension where we say doubts are not good. God does not want us to doubt. However, on, in, on the same level, doubts are normal. They're, they're just kind of we shouldn't be surprised when we do have doubts in our heart because that's that's sin <laughs> that is the devil working on us that is that is our sin um and so that we shouldn't be surprised you know this, we're all sinners so we shouldn't be surprised when we sin right um now certainly we shouldn't want to sin and we should try not to but it shouldn't surprise us at all and so when i've i've had throughout my um coming up on 10 years now of ministry a lot of people who would come to me and, um, you know, just be so, so broken by this idea that, you know, well, they're, they're having these doubts and they shouldn't be. I mean, they're, they're, they've, they've always been at church and, you know, Bible studies and all this and, and, and they shouldn't be doubting. Um, and it's not just it's doubts, it's other things too, but just like, um, usually it will, doubt is the big one. Um, anger at, at people who they can't forgive. Or, or even just not being able to forgive. Those are kind of the big ones that, that often people will come to me with. And the feeling that it's not just the feeling that these are, are wrong, that, that you should, you know, I shouldn't be doubting. It's like, no, you shouldn't be. <laughs> you know, you should be certain. Um, I should be forgiving these people. It's like, yeah, you should be. Um, it's not that, but it's, it's this idea that I must not be a good Christian because these things are happening to me. I'm having doubts. I'm, I'm, not willing to forgive this person for whatever. So that in and, of, in and of itself must make me a flawed Christian. And I always um, assure these people, it's like, that doesn't make you a flawed Christian. That makes you a human being. A sinful human being, yes, but a human being. This You shouldn't be surprised by these things. John the Baptist succumbed to his doubts. Um, go through the Psalms. <laughs> I mean, this is the, the, the prayer book the book of Psalms is the prayer book that God gave to us and said, look, pattern your prayers after these. These are good prayers. And most of the Psalms are Psalms of people with doubts, wondering, where, where are you, God? Um, saying, look, my enemy, I hate them. Please, God, come and destroy them. You know, not exactly a Christian prayer that we would not normally think, but they are because they're in the Bible. And so, you know, God uh, knows that we struggle and he knows that we, we are sinful and he wants us to bring that to him. You know, so when we doubt, that's not, um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's not like, okay, well, I must not be a Christian because I'm, I have these doubts in my heart. It's like, no, you, you are a Christian. And so that tells you where you can bring your doubts. You know, in prayer, you give them over to God and say, Lord, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm struggling right now. You know, I'm not even sure if you're listening to me because, you know, I, I just, this, that's where I am. So, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to, even though this doubt is overcoming me, I'm going to place it before you and, and trust that you will, you will take this away from me and just rely on you then. Not rely on how I feel, not rely on anything, having my ability to overcome my doubt, but I'm going to rely on your ability to fill me with assurance. 
um, I'm going to rely on your ability to um, to forgive and not mine. So, I mean, all these things just kind of prompt us to come to God all the more, to lay it at his feet. Um, and that's why, you know, when I come to a text like this, I, I don't see it as John like, oh, I'm... I'm the perfect disciple and I'm teaching others. It's like, no, he's a flawed human being, just like all of us. He struggles, just like all of us. So what does he do? <laughs> What's the great example of John? He sends his disciples to say, go, go to Jesus and, and go to the source and, and bring me back that assurance. Let me know what he says. Same thing with us. Go to the source, take it to God and, and hear him. Go into his word and hear what he says. Because he'll speak, he speaks to you through this word today, and so if you're having doubts, go to the Lord in prayer, pray, um, pray to God about this, and then read this text. That's his him speaking to you. He says, "Look, the lame walk, lepers are healed, <laughs> the deaf hear. Look what I'm doing. I'm restoring creation. I am the Son of God." This is what Jesus says to us. Um, beautiful, beautiful text. Ah, good stuff. All right, let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into, them, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, blessings to you uh, on this day. Hope uh, that's a great encouragement to start your day, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Peace be with you.